Hey guys, in this video I'm going to go over how to use Real Flight Simulator in conjunction with ArduPilot and Mission Planner to fly a simulated model of the Lofted Arrow simple F-35B design. This is especially useful because since it's the ArduPilot firmware that's driving the simulator, you're going to get a really accurate experience compared to what you'd see flying the actual model. It's a great way to practice and learn how ArduPilot behaves and just reduce risk in general when you're getting this complex aircraft ready to fly. Let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is open Real Flight, and I'm using version 9.5S here. Uh, you don't need the Steam version, uh, regular 9.5 works as well, in addition to uh, a few older versions of Real Flight uh, going back a bit. We do need to set up our controls and a few settings in the Real Flight environment before we can go ahead and load the custom F-35 model. Uh, so let's get started with that. I'm going to go over to Select Controller here in Simulation. Uh, you'll see I've already got a um, my FRSky OpenTX transmitter configured here, uh, but I'll go into the settings and show you how that's set up. So I'm using my OpenTX radio with exactly the same model that I used to fly the real F-35B loaded. Um, this is a really convenient option if it's available to you, but otherwise you can use uh, another real flight compatible controller or even a USB gamepad as long as you get some configuration settings squared away. Uh, so the first channel here I've set up to be aileron and it moves left to right as you'd expect. Second channel is elevator. Uh, so we've got the bar moving up when you're pitching back and moving down when you're pitching down. Throttles channel 3, and if we throttle up, we get the blue bar moving to the right. Rudder is channel 4, blue bar moves to the right with the rudder stick. Uh, channel 5 is our mode switch, so I've got this three position switch up here, um, like what I'd be using for the, the real F-35. Um, and that's moving upwards when we're moving the switch towards me. Um, so when we're flying, this is going to be the Q stabilize hovering flight mode. Uh, the custom Q loiter hovering flight mode in the middle, and then the fly-by-wire A fixed wing flight mode uh, all the way at the upper limit. Uh, Real Flight says channel 6 is flaps, but in this case it's actually not. Um, I've got channel 6 set up as the two position landing gear, gear switch. Gear and uh, the blue bar on that switch moves up, gear up or to the right when the gear goes up. Gear down. Channel 7, in this case, is flaps, and the blue bar is at the right when the flap switch is retracted, and to the left when it's deployed. Flaps down. Flaps up. And lastly, on channel 8, even though Real Flight thinks this is mode, we're using it for arming. So I've got my two position arming switch, and that blue bar moves to the right when I go to the armed position. Um. So that's it for the control setup for this model. Um, if anything is backwards in your controller and you can't uh, reverse it in the model settings, you can do it here. And then of course, when you're assigning inputs, you can use the uh, little automatic detection system uh, that Real Flight's got here to detect and assign the inputs. And as long as you get it to match what I described, uh, you'll be good to go and you should save that configuration so that you can open it later. Okay, uh, the next thing to configure is go ahead into simulation and down to settings. Uh, the important one over here is in physics. We're going to want to make sure real flight link enabled is set to yes. And what that does is it allows ArduPilot to send inputs and receive data from the real flight simulator in the background. Uh, I also recommend setting pause sim when in background to no and pause sim when in menu to no. Uh, because we're going to need to switch windows back and forth when we're using Mission Planner, and we don't want the simulation to try and pause uh, when it's not in the foreground. And lastly, ArduPilot in the wiki does recommend setting some graphic settings to low uh, just to reduce strain on your machine uh, when ArduPilot is running the simulator, since there is quite a lot of data being exchanged back and forth. Uh, however, I found if you've got a reasonably modern computer with good graphics performance, you can leave these settings at the default or even improve the graphics a little bit, uh, and you're still going to have good simulator performance. 
Uh, but if you're getting stutter or lag, this is probably the first place to look. Okay, uh, the last setting that I recommend you change is under physics in custom, um, turn on unlimited fuel. The F-35 has really short battery life, the real fleet model has the same short battery life, and you're going to want to do a lot of practice and a lot of flying, and it's going to be annoying if it lands every few minutes because it's out of simulated battery. Now we've got those settings squared out of the way, um, we do have to restart the simulator in order to get the, um, the real flight link enabled, so I'll do that now. But in the meantime, let's take care of a couple of additional things we need to get squared away uh, to get the Mission Planner and Ardu Pilot connection working. Now. In the download file for the F-35B, I provided a real flight folder that includes a few files. Uh, there's arduplane.exe, which is the simulated firmware. Uh, there's the Lofted Aero Simple F-35B real flight archive that we're going to use to load the custom model. And then there's this flight access folder. Uh, and that contains an EEPROM file, which is all of the parameters and settings for the virtual flight controller that's running the firmware. We want to take this flight access folder and this arduplane.exe. We want to copy it and then we want to paste it in Mission Planner's SIDL folder. Uh, this is usually located in Documents, uh, Mission Planner, and then SIDL. And if you don't have Mission Planner installed, uh, of course you should go ahead and install that. I should have covered it earlier, but uh, it's easy to find in the ArduPilot documentation. Uh, so once that's there, find this SIDL folder, paste those files. It's going to ask you if you want to replace the files in the destination. You do, um, and then Mission Planner will be good to go with the custom model. So now that we've got that started, we'll uh, restart real flight here. And then also I'm going to open Mission Planner. And once that opens, I'm going to move it to my second monitor, uh, just so it's out of the way. Okay, now it's time to import the custom aircraft for the F-35. So we'll go to Simulation, Import, Real Flight Archive, RXF, comma, G3X, or sorry, RFX. Okay, uh, so now you navigate back to that, uh, the release folder for the F-35B model uh, and the real flight subfolder within that and find the Lofted Aero Simple F-35B RFX file and click open. Um, in my case, it's asking me if I want to overwrite some uh, files that I've had loaded previously. Uh, I'm only seeing this because I had this model installed previously. Um, so you shouldn't, but if you do, it's safe to overwrite the old files. And this will take uh, 30 seconds or so to uh, import and load up when we try to select it. Uh, and let's do that now. So select aircraft. It's going to appear in custom. We can expand the custom dropdown. Choose Lofted Arrow Simple F-35B. Uh, and now it's going to create the model and load the graphics. And then OK. And it'll take a bit, uh, as I mentioned. There we go. So, first thing you've noticed, we can't fly this the way that the controller is configured now. It's kind of just going crazy. And that's because uh, this model is customized to need the ArduPilot flight controller to run. Um, it is not connected right now, and this is what would happen if you tried to fly a plane without a flight controller, controllers, uh, the servos just go crazy. So what we need to do to fix this is move over to Mission Planner and get that real flight link loaded. Uh, so in Mission Planner, in the Simulation tab, uh, we've got uh, down here a few options that we can choose. Uh, the most important one, we want to choose Skip Download. Uh, and what's that going to do is it's going to use the uh, arduplane.exe custom firmware that we put into the Mission Planner folder rather than trying to download the stock arduplane firmware 
uh, that doesn't have the customized motor mixer for the F35B. Uh, it's also going to use that virtual EEPROM uh, file that we put in the flight axis folder uh, so that all of the settings for the F35 and the PIDs and everything is loaded in and ready to go. Um, I've done something a little bit extra here. I've put my home position in Mission Planner onto the middle of the runway at Eli Field, which is where I have um, my real flight model set up here. And because I have chosen to do that, I'm also going to set this heading here to 37, uh, which is the runway heading for Eli Field. Um, it's not necessary at all, but it, it's kind of cool to have the uh, Mission Planner map view of the virtual model align with what's being shown on the screen in this virtual environment. Uh, now, aside from that, we need to pick flight axis from the model dropdown, and that's the real flight link um, between the mission planner and real flight that we want. And then we're going to click plane. So you've noticed uh, Mission Planner has connected to a vehicle here. It shows it on the map uh, in its loaded parameters. And then over in Real Flight, we saw a Flight Axis link has been enabled, or Real Flight link has been enabled. A um, little pop-up indicating that the link between Argypilot and Real Flight is now active. Um, of course, I can't take off crashed into this bush here, so I'll just use the space bar to reset. Okay. Uh, so we're good to go here. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is just go over some basic flying. Um, so, as I mentioned before, we've got arming on a switch. If I flip that switch, we'll see armed in Mission Planner, and we'll hear the motor spin up in Real Flight. Uh, right now I'm in the Q-Stabilize flight mode, and I can take off in that mode just to demonstrate uh, how it looks. Uh, so we'll just throttle up. And it's just going to feel like a regular quadcopter in a non-GPS or attitude mode in this case. Um, and you'll see all the numbers and telemetry come alive in Mission Planner, which is really cool. That's just how it's going to look in real life if you've got a telemetry radio set up in your model. Uh, so uh, you'll notice if I pitch forward here, we're going to nose down and start moving forward. And if I pitch back, we're going to pitch up and start moving back. Um, that's something that we really don't like for uh, an airplane like this, because the faster we go forward, the more the wing is going to try to force the model on the ground. Uh, and this is a heavy airplane. It's got ducted fans. They're not very efficient. We really can't afford to have that aerodynamic downforce. Uh, so that's where my custom flight mode comes into play. We flip the mode switch to the middle position, now we're in my customized version of QLoyer. So this, this adds GPS position hold, which is great, but it also changes the method of forward and backwards control to nozzle tilt. So if I push forward on the stick here, our nozzle is tilting, we're flying forwards, but we're staying level. Backwards is a bit different. Uh, if I pitch back, we'll get the same thing initially, where the nozzle is now moving backwards a bit. Um, but since there's a limit to how far back it can move, the farther we go, uh, we'll start getting a little bit of body pitch as well. Um, the biggest improvement for this method is that when we're transitioning back into uh, vertical flight from forward flight, uh, the aircraft will pitch up when it's braking, and then we'll be able to use that aerodynamic lift to our advantage because the model is still moving forwards, and we want to slow down uh, without necessarily dumping all of the lift load onto those motors right away. One minute. We can go ahead and demonstrate that now. Uh, I'll get the gear up. Gear up. And then to transition, we want a little bit more altitude. Um, I'm going to reset my flight timer here on my transmitter just so it's not yelling times at us. Throttle warning. Okay. And then mid throttle hands off, switch to fly-by-wire A. We just really want to keep hands off here until the transition finishes, and then we can start flying it like an airplane. Uh, we want to let the flight controller do the work. We don't need to be giving it pitch and roll and throttle inputs. Uh, it'll try for as smooth of a transition as it can. 
uh, and RG Pilot has gotten really good at this. Uh, quadplane flight modes get more, more development effort all the time, and things are performing quite well. Um, now, if you're not used to fly-by-wire A, you might want to take a look at the description of how it flies in the RG Pilot wiki. Um, it's essentially like if you're familiar with uh, safe type flight modes on uh, Horizon Hobby aircraft, where it's got pitch angle limits, it's got bank angle limits, and when your hand's off the stick, it's just going to hold level. Um, I really like flying in this mode. It takes a lot of stress out. It makes transitions easy. Uh, but you can certainly add a manual flight mode if you want more control. Um, and you'll see, I've got the parameters configured for about 60 to 65 degrees of bank, which lets you do some pretty nice jet-like flying. Okay, now we'll get set up to transition back to hovering flight. Uh, I'm going to start getting the flaps down here. Flaps down. And that'll help slow us up a little bit. I'm going to set up for a nice low approach. I'm going to go to mid-throttle. And then once I'm on runway heading, I'm going to go hands off and then mode switch to the middle position. And we'll just let RG Pilot do this transition nice and smooth. One minute. You'll see that pitch back for braking that I mentioned earlier, and then a nice gradual transition to vertical lift. And now we're back in that uh, customized loiter flight mode. We can use the, uh, the right stick to fly forwards a bit. We'll get situated over our touchdown point, deploy yeah, the gear. Down. And once we're on the ground, we'll throttle down and disarm. And that's it. That's how you fly the F-35B in real flight, and that's how you'll fly it in real life as well. So, thanks for tuning in. I hope you found this guide informative. Uh, if you are thinking of or actively building uh, my F-35B design, please don't skip this step. Uh, I know that it's, it's a little bit expensive to get real flight if you don't have it. It's a little bit of a hassle to set up, but it's invaluable in learning how to fly the aircraft, learning how RG Pilot works, and just getting comfortable with everything in general. Uh, if it saves you from one crash and rebuild, then it's already worth the price. Uh, anyways, if you've got any questions about how to do the real flight setup or how it behaves, feel free to reach out. I'll do my best to get back to you. Uh, I look through these YouTube comments as often as I can, and there's some contact information for me on the Lofted Arrow website as well. Thanks again, and stay tuned.